Welcome to our first video for G11, which is circles. This video is just going to be discussing the vocabulary of circles. In circles, there are a whole bunch of vocabulary terms that you're going to have to know, and we are just going to be going over them and taking notes in this video. So first, let's start by defining what exactly a circle is. A circle is just the set of all of the points that are equally distant from a given point on a plane. So if I take a center point and I go out a certain distance and I just trace all of the points that are that distance around from the center, that's what makes up a circle. The radius is that distance from the center to the edge of the circle. All right? We can think of it as a segment that we're just drawing from the center of the circle to the edge, and it just creates the circle because it is the distance from the circle to the edge. There are also all these other different line segments that are part of circles. So we're going to go through each of them. First is a chord. A chord is just a line segment that joins two points on the circle. It goes from some place on the edge of the circle to another place on the edge of the circle, and it has two endpoints. A diameter is a chord that passes through the, cir the circle center. It's the largest chord, and it cuts the circle directly in half. And the length of the diameter is always exactly twice the radius. So the diameter is the longest chord. It is a chord that goes from one edge of the circle through the center to the other edge of the circle. A secant is a line that contains a chord, and it intersects the circle at two points. So whereas a chord ends at the circle, the secant goes on and on and on, infinitely long forever in both directions, and it happens to intersect the circle at exactly two points. All right? And the interior part of a secant is a chord. We could think of every chord as being the, just the inside of a secant. And the final line segment I'm going to talk about is a tangent. And a tangent is a line that touches a circle at exactly one point. It intersects at only one point. It goes on and on and on forever in both directions, and it intersects the circle exactly once. Next we're going to talk about arcs. So an arc is just an unbroken part of the curve of a circle. And the arc measure is the degree measure of its central angle. So what does that mean? Well, a major arc is an arc that measures greater than 180 degrees, but less than 360. 360 would be an entire circle. So a major arc is a whole, is greater than 180, but less than 360. A minor arc is an arc that measures greater than zero, but less than 180. And if we take a look at this, if you take a minor arc and its corresponding major arc, together they make a whole circle. All right, so major arc is in blue here, minor arc is in red. When I talk about central angle here, the central angle is just, is just an angle whose vertex, that's the middle point, is at the center of the circle. And the degree of the central angle is equal to the degree of the arc. So if I said this was like 35 degrees in here for the central angle, then this arc also has a measure of 35 degrees. All right, if we thought, if we talk about the major arc, well, if the central angle here is 35 degrees, then the major arc is 360 minus 65 degrees, or minus 35 degrees, which gives us 325 degrees. So central angle is an angle whose center is at the center of the circle. Minor arc is greater than zero, but less than 180. Major arc is greater than 180, but less than 360. Other type of angle I want to talk about is an inscribed angle. So whereas a central angle has its vertex in the center of the circle, the inscribed angle has a vertex on the edge of the circle, and its sides are chords. All right? So inscribed angle, I'm sorry, inscribed angle has its vertex on the edge of the circle. And as we're going to talk about in our next video about central and inscribed angles, the measure of an inscribed angle is equal to one half the measure of its arc. So say we have this arc here, if we said this arc was, say, 60 degrees, then its inscribed angle would be 30 degrees, and its central angle would be 60. 
So an inscribed angle is just an angle whose vertex is on the edge of the circle. Next up is a semicircle. A semicircle are the two arcs of a circle that are cut off by a diameter, and they measure 180 degrees. So it's literally just half of the circle, and it is cut in half by the diameter. An intercepted arc is the part of the circle that lies between the two lines that intersect the circle. So whenever we have an angle, whether it's an inscribed angle, a central angle, or an angle that's inside the circle, this red part here, the part that is cut off by the, by the points of the angle, that is called the intercepted arc. Arc length is a linear measure. It's how long the arc is in linear measures like inches or centimeters or meters. All right, it's a linear measure. And it's part of the circumference of the circle. So say this circle had a circumference of like four pi inches. This arc length could be like half pi or something like that. It's a linear measure. And finally, our last vocabulary term is a sector. And a sector is a part of the circle that is bounded by two radii and an arc. So if we take an if we, for example, take this angle here, in green here is the sector formed by this angle. These two radii go out from the center to the edges, and along with this arc here, they form a sector. All right, and a sector is just part of the area of a circle. Like, if we said, for example, this circle had an area of like four pi inches squared, Maybe this sector, sector right here might be like pi inches squared. So the sector is just part of the area of a circle. So that is it for circle vocabulary. Hopefully you've written all these down in your notes because you will be using all of these vocabulary terms as you go through the unit on G11 circles.